this is Chris Norman. Welcome to another uh, episode. Here we're going to talk about how to study a frame. And really as a beekeeper, uh, that, that might be a challenging thing, especially as a new beekeeper. Uh, being able to pick up a frame and understand what's taking place within the colony, the health of the colony, uh, what's going on. Typically this is going to be with brood frames. And so in this video, we're hopefully going to give you some tips that will give you the confidence needed to when you pick up a brood frame, you're able to actually understand a little bit more about what's happening with the colony and then perhaps make decisive actions to correct any issues you see. So here we're in front of high. Now previous videos we did talk about how to understand a little what's going on between uh, when bees are coming into the colony. Uh, so let's go into the next step. So if we looked at the colony we, we might see some issues or perhaps it's just time to look into the colony. Uh, what can we do? Well one thing we can do is to spray the inside of this colony here one thing we could do is pop open the bottom of this colony, let's do that right now, and look underneath the colony and see what's going on. Now in this case, I think we have enough space, and I can tell by looking, feeling it, it's actually a pretty heavy uh, colony. I'm going to pop this open, and we're going to put some more smoke in here, and I'm going to go ahead and prop it open here and move it down, okay? Now I can sense this is happening a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, smoke the bees here. Now I can look at what's happening on the bottom board. I can look at what's happening underneath and get an okay understanding. Do I see any uh, queen cells? Do I see much swarming? In this case, there are about, um, oh, six frames or so approximately so they're not an issue of swarming at all um, and so you can get a nice understanding of what's happening just by looking at the underbelly of the colony now let's say we want to get more information right we see some issues happening well that's where we want to get uh, put this down here that's where we want to get some uh, information from uh, reading the brood frame so let's, let's do that right now let's make sure this colony is on on top here Okay, so let's get some information about this colony by looking at the brew frames. I want to prop this on top here, see if there's any queen. This particular colony is a Russian, and so uh, typically um, the, the brew pattern will look different than perhaps an Italian. Just keep in mind that your studying of the frames may depend on actually the subspecies you're looking at of Apis mellifera. So in this case, we know that there's some different variations of that depending on the subspecies. So when well, we look at this, is there any queen here? I do not see here, so I'll go and put her, or put this cover down here. There's a nice humming coming from inside the colony. Now I can look down here and I can see already nice food sources. Okay, so without even going into the colony, I can see there's some honey here. So their food sources are pretty good. And a lot of times from the bottom to the top, without actually getting into the colony, you can understand a few uh, characteristics going on. In this case, we do want to open it up and see what's going on with uh, the colony. In this case, of course, the video is focusing on uh, understanding and reading uh, the frames. So let's do that right now. And typically as you're doing this, you really want to only, only look at maybe uh, one or two, maybe three frames max. You don't have to go through every single frame to get an understanding of the health of the colony. And so, again, the outside are most likely going to be nectar, perhaps pollen and nectar as well, or capped honey. So we just want to make sure quickly that the, the colony has enough food uh, for this particular season. And so if you're in a Darth period where there's not a lot of sources coming into the colony, that may change whether or not you're going to feed the colony, depending on what you're seeing there. If you see little food sources, and of course you're in a honey flow, uh, that may not, you might actually not need to feed the colony at all. So let's look at this here. Looks like we have, oh look at that, nice capped, or uh, nice uh, nectar here. You can see it kind of uh, glistening in the sun. So that's really not really nice. And a lot of capping. So here we see a variety of things happening. We see uh, capped uh, honey. Uh, this is this is basically the final preparation 
of nectar turning into honey. When it's good, they're gonna go ahead and cap it. You also see brood happening here. Now you can tell there's some spottiness going on. Now keep in mind, you can see a few things. One, this is a Russian uh, subspecies. So in times of darth, brood tent, uh, the spotty brood pattern actually increases. But also you can see nectar. They're actually putting it in between this colony. So it's gonna actually look like it's more uh, spottiness because a queen cannot lay obviously where there's nectar in. So just keep that in mind. Overall, we see a nice layer here. Uh, we see uh, the coloration of the cappings is a nice, I guess, cookie color, if you will. Uh, so if, you, if it's, if it's, you see the cappings as sunken, it's greasy, it's uh, kind of gross, you know that's gonna be an issue. In this case, looks like a nice color. It's concave, so a little circular with worker cells. And so we know that this is good. I don't see any periphery cells or slits in the cell. Now keep in mind as uh, honeybees will start capping the cells, it comes from the outside to the inside. So there will be a uniform circle uh, even when they're capping it. But again, you're seeing slits, different holes, which might indicate there's an issue going on within that cell. So make sure you can examine it by using a nail or something to uh, puncture that hole to get samples. If it's watery, ropey, that may be an indication, obviously, that there's something going on in case of American or European fowl brood. So we're gonna go ahead and put this one back. So our goal here is to be very quick. We don't necessarily wanna cause any issues or so we want to kind of keep our inspections hopefully down to 10 minutes or less. So I looked at one frame. Let's look at maybe one more. That was kind of a, a mixture. And as I'm going through here, I can see there's a lot of food sources. So I'm, I'm actually very happy. This colony has a decent amount of, of uh, food sources for them. So this is almost a completely capped uh, food source. You can see here a lot of cappings on top some little brood there, and so they're bringing in quite a bit of, of, of honey and food sources. I'm not worried about food at all for them. Uh, again, you see spottiness, but in this case, because they're Russian, and because obviously they're, at this point, bringing in uh, food sources, it's not an issue. I will look at one more, <laughs> in this case, the one that actually is a full, uh, uh, or majority of a brood frame to kind of see. So here we see, okay, so we see a uh, brood frame. We have spottiness going on. Again, they just came out of a dart. Looks like they're bringing in uh, some nectar sources. I see eggs going on. I see a nice pattern of eggs. So I don't see any spotty. I don't see any multiple eggs going on. It's a single egg in the center of the cell, very uniform and also across the whole section here. You know, every single one of these cells has an egg in it. So I know that things are going well. There is some spottiness, so that might be something to think about. Compare your notes. Just because you see spotty brood pattern does not mean there is an issue, uh, but it does mean you stop, examine your notes, and make sure uh, everything is good for your particular colony, subspecies, and season you're in. So just keep that in mind. Overall, you see the queen right here in the back. She has a nice yellow dot on her, looking very healthy. And again, in this case, because it's Russian, because we were in a dorth or coming out of a dorth, I'm not too worried about the spotty brood pattern. Overall actually looks really healthy and the color of the cappings look really nice. See this kind of uh, uh, cookie color, so that's, that's pretty good. I don't see too much uh, perforated cells, nothing of, of a concern right now. So overall it looks really nice. I'm gonna go and set her back. Now again, I know where the queen's at. We went on a squisher. This right here can squish the queen. She's in the center now. I'm gonna set her back nice and gently and put her safe right back into the colony. I'm gonna go and do that with all these frames and you're done with your inspection. So what do we learn when, it's, when, it, when it comes down to studying a frame? We know that we wanna look for uh, signs of disease. We wanna look for food sources. We wanna look for uh, patterns of brood. Is there a good uh, egg laying pattern going on? A larva, capping, is there any periphery cells on that? How's the coloration of it going? Um, inside the cell specifically uh, of the larva, is there a nice uh, layer of, of uh, uh, worker jelly or, or even royal jelly for a younger larva or egg? That will tell you there's a nice nutrition going on in the colony and there's not much to worry about. So I hope that helps you guys in kind of getting to know a little bit more about your bees. Um, and it's a skill that needs to be learned over time, but overall, 
uh, with, with practice and preparation, uh, you'll be able to understand more about the colony there. So if you have any other questions, let us know. Appreciate your journey. Happy beekeeping.